Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Life Transformation Radio. I'm your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx Speaker, Business Positioning Strategist, and International Best-Selling Author, Sean Douglas. This show is currently heard in over 90 countries. So whether it's your first time joining us or you've been listening to us for some time, I want to thank you to those who are listening from around the world. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformation. Here, we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing, highlighting those transformational moments that change our lives and how we use them to then transform others and elevate their lives as well. Now, you can listen to us live right here on the Blog Talk Radio Network Tuesday through Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join our Facebook group, Life Transformation Radio Community, where we interact with the listeners, interact with the guests that we have on the show, and continue the conversation even after the show has ended. You can subscribe, rate, and review the show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spreaker, Spotify, TuneIn, Player FM, Radio Public, Overcast, CastBox, Himalaya app, Google Play Music app, Pandora, and we are available on our YouTube channel at Life Transformation Radio. So I ask that you subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast platform. On the show, my guests are entrepreneurs, speakers, business owners, coaches, podcasters, authors, amazing human beings that are impacting the world around them. And my guest today has done exactly that. If you have any questions for any of the guests that I bring on the show during our live broadcast, go ahead and give us a call at 657-383-1109. Again, the number is 657-383-1109. And with that, please help me welcome to the show my guest for today, Mike McDonald. Mike, welcome to Life Transformation Radio. Hi, Sean. I'm excited to be on. Man, I'm excited to have you. Um, you know, we've known each other for quite some time. Been on a couple of the uh, virtual summits with you. And you are just the guy that I see a lot, uh, just crushing it in the visibility and the spotlight realm. And I'm excited to have you on the show to talk about that. Yeah, me too. It's been a long journey for, for both of us, really. And um, I've been mm-hmm. following your journey as well. And, yeah, it's been great to to follow you and to keep doing my thing as well. It's good to practice what we preach, as always. Oh, 100%, man. The title of this episode is From the Shadows to the Spotlight with podcaster Mike McDonald. He is a speaker, a podcaster, an entrepreneur, and a coach that has cystic fibrosis and diabetes, but that has not let that stop him. After going from hiding in the shadows basically being invisible to being in the spotlight, he shares his message and he now helps others to do the same. And you can check out his Instagram and the Facebook links are right there. His Facebook group is visibility with Mike. And you can also go to facebook.com forward slash. I am Mike McDonald with two L's. Go ahead and click on those links, copy and paste them into the internet to your browser and connect with him on your favorite platform. Send him a friend request, letting him know that you listen to his episode of life transformation radio question that I have to ask. And I believe is the most important question, man, is why, why do you do what you do? Well, my, my business journey started when I was about 15, I suppose, because when you're young and you're enthusiastic, a lot of people say, well, you earn your stripes by volunteering or you do a lot of work for free to sort of 
earn your stripes and build up from there. And that was the the natural thing for me because when I was about 15, I was playing tennis. That was my my sort of second sport that I got involved in. And I was good, but because I started old, I was never going to be a professional. So the coaches that coached me turned around and said, well, have you thought about being a coach? And I hadn't. I had no, I had no idea that that was what I wanted to do. But I decided, well, they think that I've got, I've got a, an eye for it, I suppose. I've got the, the enthusiasm with it, and I should give it a go. So I did. I got the qualifications that I needed. I started off volunteering, and I'm sure you've experienced it as well, the, the feel-good feeling when you help people. And having that when sure. I was 15 to 16, that was the thing for me. That was, that was it. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to spend my, my life doing, helping people. And getting that from such a young age was the, the guiding light for me. That was what what encouraged me to keep going. And it's a funny story because I moved from tennis coaching to personal training. That was my second sort of business venture because I realized that health was a bigger problem than tennis. So it went from, okay, I can help people get better at tennis. That's okay. But helping people losing weight and being healthier was like just so much bigger. It just felt so much more important and, you know, funnier, those of you that do know, having health conditions, helping people be healthier is, uh, is a strange situation to be in. But that, that sparked my journey, really, because when people realized I had those conditions and I was not only healthier than average, but helping people do that as well, that made me think, well, maybe my story is helpful because my clients were like, no more excuses now, you know, if Mike can do it, then so can I, and they got better results because of it, I didn't have to tell them anything different, but because of the story and the inspirational aspect, they seemed to not listen to me more, but they seemed to have the story change inside their own heads, that's what it led to, I realized that my story could change other people's stories inside their own heads, and then everything sort of took off from there because I thought, wouldn't it be really cool if I could help people and be valuable enough to change people's lives without having to do much more than being myself and sharing my story and sharing the lessons that I've learned. That's without my own self-study on self-improvement and you know, mindset and neuroscience and all those things. All that came afterwards. But the spark, the thing that really spurred me on and got the momentum going was realizing that I could do it just by being myself. I didn't have to change. I love it. And I think a lot of people get get scared about that. You know, we think that we have to be somebody else. We have to act a certain way, be a certain way. Yeah, it's um it's definitely it's definitely a, a realization for me because when I was young and I'd spent so long thinking that hiding was the only way to get by, you know, like feeling that I was the worst in the room or feeling that I was not good enough to do any of those things that other people could do and in some cases that was true. But then in other things, it was a case of, well, maybe it's just finding your way of doing it. Maybe the result can be the same, but how you get there might actually be a bit different. And that's okay as well. The result's still the same. Does it really matter how you get there? And then when, when I found like fitness and I was old enough to be a member of a gym, I realized that I didn't have to settle for performing at my old level, if you will. I could improve myself. I could develop myself. I could be stronger than average, better than average, and I could feel, well, without sort of exaggerating it, I could feel nearly superhuman in my own mind because I felt so much more confident, so much more capable, and I was in the gym like every day because I got the benefits of it. It was... It was phenomenal. And that, that also got me into the right frame of mind because when you first start, you're awful. 
And that's the same with a lot of things. You're not going to be good when you first do it. And I understood that because of my experiences. And I sort of took the lessons that I learned with having health conditions into the health industry and into the business sort of industry and self-improvement and visibility. I've took the lessons that the, the health conditions have essentially taught me. And I've gone, okay, just sort of rinse and repeat almost. You know, you're not going to be good. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Find your way. Do your thing and you'll improve over time. I've taught that principle and gone, well, what else could I do? What else could I try? What else could I put that principle to? Um, where can I take this? And I'm excited to see what I can do next. Because once I broke through first time round, it didn't make it any easier to break through again. It just made it more efficient and quicker because... I knew what the process was and that's what it's all about. It's about right. understanding that it doesn't get easier. You just get better at it. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so true. It's like, <laughs> I was a drill instructor for, for air force basic training and halfway through, I would say who thinks basic training is getting easier. You know, who thinks that it's not as hard as it used to be. And, and you're, you're starting to figure things out, you know, and almost everybody raised their hand. I'm like, well, it's not. It's not getting easier. Basic training hasn't changed. You've just grown. You've changed. You've adapted. You've overcome. Basic training is no different than what you've been experiencing. It's just we're not yelling at you as much because you've assessed, you've adapted, and you've overcame. And you've used situational awareness to make good decisions. Otherwise, you know what the ramifications are because we told you up front what they are. And they're like, wow, I never looked at it. I'm like, basic training is not getting easier. In fact, it's getting harder. It's getting harder because we're putting more on you now. But you're rising to the occasion. You, you are the one who is overcoming. And they look and they're like, huh, I guess so. I'm like, it's not getting easier. I can tell you that right now. It's not getting easier. You know, so, yeah, you're just getting better, man. It, 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 you've had a growth moment, you know, you're, you're getting better, you're getting acclimated, you know, you're, you're getting more knowledgeable, you know, for us to have knowledge is, is, is just not enough. It, it's applied knowledge that I think is key and what is missing from most people's business plan, um, their visibility plan, you know, whatever it is, like you have to apply the knowledge in a strategic way. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And I think that it's almost like you don't need to know everything. You don't need to know all of it. Because one of the main things that I've learned is the actions that you take actually give you the next sort of version of knowledge, right? I call it version of knowledge because you learn from your mistakes you discover things, you realize things, and then you apply that knowledge. If you if you knew all of the steps from like A to Z, if you knew those, you could get to like B or C, and then everything could change because you've learned something through taking that action. So very often, the sort of the mentality behind it, the mentality behind how you do it, is a weird feeling because you're almost learning as you go. I mean, you know bits and pieces, but you're getting the certainty or the clarity, if you will, as you go along. And you've got to be okay with that unpredictability of it. You've got to be okay with not just not knowing, but not knowing until you actually go out there and find out. And most people have this, this feeling where they need to control it, they need it to be predictable, they need it to be something that they can grab hold of and make sure that it works, make sure that it's successful. And the truth is, is the journey so winding, it's so personal, it's so tailored to that individual that even if I gave you the blueprint, it's not going to look the same while you're building it. It's like a house that changes every time 
you build a room or you put the room together, the whole house could change. And then you've got to put the second room together, but then the whole house changes again. So every time you do something, yep. the model changes while you're going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very true. The whole purpose of the show is about transformation. We talk about these transformative moments that happen in our life. So for you, what would you say is your transformational moment that has changed your life and put you on the path to what you're doing today? Well, I'm going to hopefully share two because despite a lot of the things that have happened, there have only really been two that, that stand out the most. And the first one needs a bit of a, a backstory, I suppose, but I, I have cystic fibrosis and I'm diabetic, but the cystic fibrosis came first. So diabetes was something that I grew over time. You become more and more susceptible to it as you age with the CF, right? So that's kind of a bit of backstory there. And I had a friend who was a bit older than I was that had both conditions, right? This is the, hopefully I'm explaining this quite well. So I only had CF. He had both conditions, right? Which was fine. We weren't right. allowed to mingle because of cross infection either. So there's no cystic fibrosis support group because we make each other worse. So that's not that's something that doesn't happen. So when that happened, right. we got on quite well. Family could mingle, we couldn't. So my mum and dad knew their mum and dad. It was that kind of click. They'd meet up in like the hospital when we were there at the same time, and that's kind of the limit of our social interaction around people that have the same condition as us. Now, cut a long story short, the, my, my friend, the guy that I knew, he unfortunately passed away before I was then diagnosed with diabetes. So, obviously I had the whole hate, hating myself spiral, the whole wish I could have done something better, what could I have done, all that stuff was building up inside me and truth be told, he wasn't in impeccable condition. I know we all get worse before we pass away. I'm not saying that. But he could have looked after himself a bit better than he did. When he passed away, obviously, we had the whole scenario of, I wish I could do something better. I wish I could have done anything. It doesn't matter what it was, I'd have done it. You know, you go through that whole spiral around that. But then I was then diagnosed diabetic. I fought it. I adjusted my diet. I adjusted my, I was a personal trainer and it was like, come on, I can fight this. I had the whole like pride thing going on. You know, I can do this. What's going on? How am I diabetic? That's not even real. Right. That's not, that's not possible. And it was like, no, it's not what you're eating. It's how your body's reacting to what you're eating. Cause it's its own little type of diabetes it isn't type one or type two. So I was like, that can't be right. No way can that be right. And I had, it's, it, it's a weird feeling when, obviously, when you've got health conditions, your mortality rate is low anyway. But when you knew somebody that passed away with the conditions that you now have, and you just, you just don't know what to do. You don't know where to put yourself. You don't know what to feel. You don't know what to think. You don't know anything, not just that, but I tried to fight it. I tried to put mm -hmm. it off. I tried to do something about it and I just had to basically accept it. I had to almost let it take me almost as if to say, look, this is the way it is. Your life has changed forever. You've just got to deal with it. There's nothing you can do. And combined with the fact that my friend passed away, it was a real sense of, am I next? It was a real sense of, is this it? Because when he said, when he say he's older than me, we're only talking about two years. We're not talking like 10 years. We're not talking 20 years. He, he wasn't a fully grown adult at the time, if you will. He was a few right. years older than me. So then I did the stupid thing of Googling what mortality rate was, which didn't help my mental state, to tell you the truth. So that, that was something that I had to overcome. I had to accept that, you know, I'm on borrowed time now, as they call it, and 
I've got to do something about it. I can't just sit around. I can't just play the game of, ooh, did you do everything that you wanted to do with your life? And the answer would have been no, and I had to change that. I had to do something about that because there was no way I was going to let this thing beat me for a start. There's no way it's going to beat me. It's impossible. I know too much about myself and the health and fitness industry to be able to just sit around and let it take me. It just wasn't going to happen. So it's not. It's not. I have my... My down days, I have my bad moments, I have my I wish I, should, I wish I didn't eat that, you know, I have those moments as well, like everybody else, <laughs> everyone has those moments, so right. I do that as well, but I, it's under control, I'm doing okay, I'm winning, I'm officially winning, and sure. that, that is something that I have to deal with, but the mental state of you don't know, I mean, everyone doesn't really know when their clock's going to be punched, and I get that, but when the combination of someone that's the same age as you passes away with the same conditions and you realize that, you know, thanks to modern medicine, you're actually older than what the average mortality rate is with these conditions made me think I've got to do something about this. I've got to make this worth something. I've got to make my life worth something because so yeah. many people go through the motions, they struggle, they don't know what they're doing with themselves. Uh, I was in a position whereby I can't afford to do that. I can't afford to have that conversation with myself of you did everything that you could. That's the one that I want. I don't want the looking forward to the weekend because I've run myself to the ground working a nine to five and nothing's really changed. Nothing's really impacted anything. Nothing's really been that meaningful. That's not what I want. That's a wasted journey it's a wasted life that's not the way I wanted to live so that caused me to right. start online that caused me to start my business online helping more people because you know I was a tennis coach I was a personal trainer I couldn't have done that when into my 60s or 70s so I had to think longer term I had to assume that I'm going to live longer Right. And I've got to make sure that I'm able to help people even when I couldn't physically do it. So that's when I made the choice to go online. I thought I'm sick of doing the small things. I'm sick of playing small. It's not worth it. It's not helping anybody, let alone me. And I've got to do something about this. I've got to take charge. I've got to proactively go out there and say, is it worth it? Is what I'm doing meaningful? Is it impactful? Is it something that I actually want to do with my time? Because I already had a lot of control over what I did. Self-employed, personal right. trainer, tennis coach, able to do a lot of things with my day that some people would otherwise say, well, surely that's a privilege in itself, you know? And it was. But the truth is, is because of mm -hmm. what happened, I felt like it wasn't enough. There was that little voice that just said, you've got to do more. You've got to, you've just got to do more. There has to be more. There's more to life than this. Surely you've got to go out there and do it. So that was the thing for me. That's number one. Now, number two is actually a little more recent. So that was sort of early 20s. This one was sort of a couple of years ago. <laughs> this one's quite recent. And... This is where, you know, everyone's got that family member, right? Where, how can I put it? Um, they're like, when you're rich mm -hmm. and famous, you can look after me. You know, you'll be able to keep me right. when you're rich and famous, right? That was, that was my grandma that was like always rooting for me, always wanted me to do really well, always had the whole, you'll be rich and famous one day, you know, the really sort of into it with the whole like you. Right, you could tell that you were their priority, yep. yeah. And I, I, I had that. It was amazing. And unfortunately, she passed away a couple of years ago, and I, I still struggle with it because when someone, not like fills your head with the story, that's the wrong way of putting it, but when someone believes in you that much and wants so much for you, and that's not there anymore. I lost a bit of motivation. I lost motivation. I lost direction. I felt lost for a good six months. I had no idea what I was doing. The, the business could have disappeared and I wouldn't really have cared all that much because that's just where I was. It was the place I was in. 
right? I didn't, I didn't feel that great. You know, I'd lost, I'd lost my gran, basically. And when no. you lose motivation and you realize, well, I realized for a start that I didn't realize I'd taken that information in. I didn't realize that that meant more than I thought it did. I thought it was just a saying, you know, like it was just phrases and she she meant it, but I didn't think it was like the be all and end all, right? But inside my own head, that motivated me, that kept me going, that kept me pulling forwards, you know, whatever it was, didn't matter. When I impacted the world, when I was a millionaire and I'd be able to look after my family, that was the story that was playing inside my own head. And when I lost that, I had to go out there and I had to find it again. I had to find it again from a source that was just myself. It had to be me. It had to come from me. Now, it already did at that point. It already did. But I didn't realize how much of an impact that made. I didn't realize how much of an impact my gran had on my ability to be consistent, do things every day, keep working, keep grinding, be the competitive version of you in the friendliest way possible, to be able to move mountains and do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do because of the work that you put in. I lost the, a bit of the reason for that because I lost my gran. I realized that I had to pick mm-hmm. up the slack, if you will, in my own head. I had to pick up where my gran had left off almost inside my own mind. I had to find my new why, my new motivation. What would it be? What would I attribute my success to? How would I keep going? How would I keep pushing? Because it's so easy to stop. I mean, Sean, you'll know this. It's very easy to stop. You would not believe how easy it is to say, no, I don't need to do a podcast today. It's fine. I don't need to do that. It's easy to have that story (laughs) playing if you don't have the the reason to do it. And I had moments when I lost that. I lost the story of why you should do it. And I had to find it again. I had to uh, to go inside myself to figure out why am I doing the show? Why am I doing the content every day? Why do I have clients? What's the point? What's the aim? What's the goal? Why do I keep doing it? Why bother? I mean, why mm-hmm. bother when you spent your whole life just trying to get by just trying to push forward just trying to keep going be consistent something will come up something will happen something must happen it must do i had so much sort of faith in like self-created luck if you will that i had just had to keep going something would happen if i went out there and created it something would happen and i had to find my purpose again i had to find my direction again but I had to realize that the source of it mattered. Where it came from almost mattered to me more than what it was. Because when the source goes away, hmm. you've right. got to find it again. That, that was the thing that I had to realize, that if it came from myself, it was never going to go away. No matter how small it was, because it was never going to go away, because everywhere you go, there you are, right? Right. If it came from you, you could always use it and call upon it when it was needed. And that was what I spent about five months doing, six months doing, massive amount of like silence, self-awareness work, all the things that I teach people, I had to practice myself. I had to go back to basics again, go back to what matters, what doesn't matter, why am I doing this thing in the first place? And that's what allowed me to keep going, not stop, keep pushing, keep being consistent. And it's actually yielded better results because, again, you do get stronger. You do get more resilient. You do get that little bit better at handling it. And it could have took years to get over it. Everything would have crumbled. The whole business would have been like complete mess. And rather than do that, I did what I could. I went through the motions, to tell you the truth. I just went through the motions every day, just kept going, doing whatever I felt like doing in that moment. And that allowed me to get through it because I gave myself the space to do it. I gave myself to process it all, deal with it all, move past it, and then find my purpose again. And I'm 
inclined to say that I'm better off because of it. Love it, man. That's a heck of a transformational moment. And I know for sure that others feel the same way. But I liked how you said that you had to find that the missing piece it was the other part that that was really missing. And when, when it goes away, you know, where does the source, where does it come from? You know, and that's why I ask, well, what their why is. What is your why? For what, You have to have a reason why you do what you do. First question we ever ask children, why would you do that? That's bad. Why would you do that? You want to know why. As a parent, you're like, why would you do that? We know that's dumb. We know that's not right. What are you doing? Why would you do that? You know? And, and kids, I don't know. Kids are like, no. <laughs> kids are trying to figure out life. You know, kids don't. Kids don't look at, at, you know, if they get into some paint or they get into some other stuff, they, they don't think, you know what I mean? They're not like, oh, well, it's going to ruin the table. And then if it was a table, then it's going to look bad. And then we have people over, they're going to, like, question us about it. And then the table costs money. So, you know, we got to keep it clean. It's got to last forever because, you know, we might be moving in a couple of years. So we got to make sure that we have a table at our new house. And, like, all of the things that run through adults' heads aren't even a glimmer of hope inside children's brains. And so they have no rhyme or reason what they do. They're like, I don't care. You know, they, got, they, they have no reason other than great upbringing to not do something wrong. They have no idea why they should or should not do that. So I like, I like where you're coming from. You know, like got to find another source. Like when one source goes away, you got to find another source. You got to, you know, you got to stay in it. So, Absolutely, absolutely love that. So you've taken your why and a transformational moment. You've created summits uh, that I've been a guest on. They've been absolutely incredible um, podcasts and everything else. How are you elevating the world around you? One of the things that I always try to do, whether it's, podcaster, leader, whatever label that people tend to call me, it always stems from just me doing my thing. Just me doing what I enjoy, keeping doing whatever it is, you know. If it's something that I want to help people with, I have to also practice it. I also have to do it. I also have to understand that most of the knowledge that experts tend to have comes from experience there's only so much that you can learn without going out there and doing it first and now with the way the world is right now most people don't have the experience to handle what's going on so we're all just doing what we can and it's the same in business it's the same in life it's the same with trying to put yourself out there and do whatever it is that you can most of it is about experience. Most of it is about learning from mistakes. And you know, that, that's what I try and do. I learn from my mistakes, learn my lessons. If there's any extra there that I can pull from the knowledge that I have about how people work and how the brain works, I use that to back it up. But most people that ask me to back up whatever it is that I say, I'm able to do that. But most people don't want an essay on why they should do something. They just want to be told why they should do something. And that, that's fine. I'm okay with, with that because my, my communication style has gone from long-winded to a bit more punchy over the years because that's what people want. That's what people will consume. That's what people will take and will use. You don't want a long-winded sort of citing my sources thing on how to live a better life or how to grow your business through media or starting your own platforms like this one or whatever it is. Most people just want to be told. They just want to learn from someone that's been there, that's done it, that's got the T-shirt and all of the merchandise that comes with it, and they're, they're doing their thing. They just keep doing it. They just keep practicing whatever it is that they preach. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky in that by doing that, I can also elevate others, you know, by doing the things that I do that I also help yep. people with. I have the side benefit of benefiting people that are also 
watching me do my thing, you know, not from a sort of peer level, but from a consumer level. At every level, I'm either helping people doing the things that I can do, or people are consuming my story, my message, my expertise, and they're benefiting as well. So that way I'm able to, one of the uh, phrases that I was told when I first started coaching was the best thing about it is you're able to serve through people. So by helping people with coaching, they then help people, they then help people, and the ripple effect of helping someone in a profound way benefits the people that are around them, that benefits the people that are around them. So if we all think like that, and we all realize that, you know, just helping someone doesn't just help that person, it helps everyone that that person touches, and then they help every person that that person touches, that's how we solve our problems, that's how we we elevate the world, that's how we can change the world, it's about making sure that you've got to be a role model, set the example, be the best version of you, because it gives other people permission to do the same. I absolutely love that, man. Very, very, very cool. So let's talk about, as we start to wind down already, um, let's talk about how people can get a hold of you, um, your podcasts, uh, your Facebook group, virtual summits. You know, just, just talk about what it is that you're offering people, um, you know, inside your ecosystem. Well, the, the podcast is a Q&A show. It's a question and answer show where they ask me things on self-improvement and also business here and there. So I don't profess to be a business expert, but I do have the odd question here and there. But it's mostly a self-improvement podcast. Um, you can find that on places like iTunes and Spotify as well. They're the two main places. And the, the Facebook group came about because there are people that see me do my thing, see me sort of, you know, being on shows like this one, having my own show, being on summits, hosting events, and they want to do that, but they struggle to be confident enough to do it. They struggle to believe in themselves enough to do those things. You know, the whole mental side mm -hmm. that gets you to get to do the action, they're just not there yet. They're just not in that mental space. So I realized that that was important. People are scared to be on video. They're scared to be on podcasts. Some people are scared to write Facebook posts like I was. When I first started, I was afraid <laughs> to even write on my, on my own personal page. You know, just writing something. Right. I was like, oh, my God, what on earth would people think? This is hopeless. I've got no chance. I've got no idea what I'm talking about. No one's going to know whatever it is I'm saying. I'm not going to understand any of it. What am I even doing? Right? I had all that. I had all those stories, all those reasons not to. And I overcame those. And people were like, I've got to learn this stuff. I've got to figure it out. I've got to learn this as well. So okay. I thought, right, I'll start the Facebook group. I'll get people involved. I'll share all my inside tips. If you want the extra help, then I obviously invite people to do that as well. Um, it's all it's all within there. It's all within there. And the, the Facebook page, which is I am Mike McDonald on Facebook, that is a bit of everything. That's like my hub. So you can listen to the podcast on there. You can follow the sort of more written based stuff. I do live streams on there. That's a bit of everything. That's the, the Facebook page. So they're the, they're the two main Perfect. places, podcast and Facebook page. Love it, man. Absolutely love it. If the listeners start tuning in right at this moment and they don't listen to any other part of the show <laughs> at this moment, what is the message that you want to give them? What is the through line of this episode? What is your takeaway for the listeners? Okay. <laughs> You don't have to listen to the story that was put inside your own head as to why you can't do the thing that you want to do. The voice inside your own head was put there 
didn't start there. And you don't have to listen to it. You don't have to believe it if you want to impact the world in your own individual way. You don't have to. It's not something that I do as much as I used to. And the results have shown every time I've ignored that. Every time I've ignored the voices, if you will, I get results because of it. And if you do that, if you ignore the voice inside your own head, if you do it, do it badly at first if you have to, but if you do it, start making waves, create your own ripple effects, you'll either grow your business if you've got a business, or you'll make the impact that you want to make. And most of it does start with getting out of your own way. Most of it does start with that, and that's how you get the ball rolling. And that's how you keep the ball rolling. And eventually, you will get to your destination. Mm. I love it. Wow, man. Absolutely very, very cool. Uh, So in the last few minutes, how do we go from the shadows and living invisible to the spotlight? How, How does this happen? How do we get visibility? Well, a part of it comes down to understanding that the things that you've held on to for so long is wrong. So when people talk about growth mindset, they talk about being open to possibilities, they talk about putting themselves out there and getting the opportunities and doing all those things, you won't do that if the if you believe what you're telling yourself. You won't do that if what you think you know you are completely and utterly sure that that is true. So a big part of change, a big part of transformation, a big part of taking steps that go against everything that you think is right, you've got to first be open to the fact that you could be wrong. And most people struggle with that. Most people struggle with realizing that they're wrong and that there's something to replace that with here's the thing you can try and convince people that they're wrong that's not going to work people will fight that i did people fight that with every ounce of strength that they have because what's left if you stop believing that you've got nothing else to hold on to nothing else to form your reality with nothing else to create your life with you know if you don't believe that you're good enough to achieve these things or it'll never happen for you you've got to try to realize that that has got them to where they are now. So when you tell someone that they're wrong, that's not going to work. They have to be open to the possibility that it's not the case before they'll do anything that contradicts it. That's that's the trick. It's not about, you're wrong, you're yep. horrible, there's no way of doing this. It's not about trying to battle it. Because, I mean, you know yourself, people get defensive, people get angry, people get frustrated, and it comes down to... You've got to be open to the possibility of being wrong before something else can replace it inside your own head. Otherwise, you've got no reason to replace it. You've got no reason to change if you believe it, because why would you change? Right. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And it comes down to the stories that we tell ourselves. I say this all the time. We are all telling ourselves stories. We all of us. All of us, we always tell ourselves stories. So figure out what story you're telling yourself. And if it's holding you back, then change it. Change it. Change the story that you're telling yourself. And sometimes so, it can be small go. things as well. It doesn't have to be a huge thing. Yeah. I mean, we talk about the big things all the time. But, you know, if you make like a, a 1% shift every day or even every mm-hmm. week, I mean, imagine doing a 1% shift every week. That's 50% in a year. That's, that, that's still quite a bit, <laughs> if you think about it. That's still yeah. that's a, that's 50% change, which, you know, if we're 100%, that's like half again. That's, that's amazing if you think about it that way. Yep. Yep. I absolutely agree, man. Man, thank you so much for being an amazing guest on Life Transformation Radio. Um, loved your story. Love your why. I think that you gave some powerful, powerful testimony to that. You are worth it. You can do this, you know, and, and, you know, just get out there, 
just just get out there. Just do it. So love your love what you talked about today. Love your message, and uh, just thank you for coming on the show. It's my pleasure, Sean. I was uh, very very happy to share that, and I hope everyone listening does go out there and do it, and realizes that the only person in their way is themselves. Boom. Get out of your own way and make it happen. Outstanding. Life Transformation Radio listeners, an amazing guest impacting the world around him. If anything has resonated with our conversation today with Mike McDonald, please connect with him on social media. Click his Facebook and Instagram links and send him a friend request, letting him know that you listen to his episode of Life Transformation Radio. And with that, I close the show by saying live your Find opportunities everywhere to live out the core, the core values that you hold deep in your heart. And I call this living your brand. So until next episode, live a great life.